birch bark canoe is basically a canoe made out of birch bark, but it's lined with, uh, with wood. And so the construction of the birch bark canoe comes in three parts. There's the harvesting of materials, the carving of parts, and actually the putting together of the canoe. And what's really fascinating about the birch bark canoe is that the birch bark canoe is actually made from the outside in, as opposed to other canoes are made from the inside out. And so the birch bark canoe usually re requires, of course, a sheeting of birch bark that's laid flat on the ground. You'll actually build a frame like where people are gonna sit. On the bottom, you'll put that on top of the birch bark, but that's the bottom part of the canoe. You'll put a whole bunch of rocks on that frame. That frame is only temporary, it just gives shape to the canoe. And then you have to make slices in the birch bark because they have to be able to fold up and the cuts, and they make the birch bark go like this so that they can go around because these are square pieces that can't go around. You have to make cuts for them to go around. Once that, that happens, you put stakes around the, the canoe and you put your, and then you're floating your gunwales above the canoe and then you're attaching your bark to it. Then you put your nose stems in, you put your sheathing, which is like thin pieces of wood that you put in be, underneath the ribs. Then you put your ribs on and that's your birch bark canoe. And it's very floatable. So you would use um, spruce roots to sew the bark together. You would use spruce gum to water seal any cracks or holes. Um, you're gonna use the birch bark for the shell of the canoe. You're gonna use either cedar or white pine for the ribs and sheathing. You're gonna use birch or some sort of a hardwood for the crossbars. And uh, the nose stems, again, you would make out of either white pine or, or cedar. And it's just a very simple construction that takes place. And uh, the canoe has a flat bottom. And so the canoe, birch bark canoe is not round like this. If it's round like that, it's just gonna tip. So you have to, when you're making your ribs, you have to make them a certain way so that it's, it's not tippy. And so birch bark canoe building is a fascinating thing to learn. You don't use a measuring tape. All you use is your eyes and your hands and your body parts for measurements. And so that's, that's what you use to make the birch bark canoe. So you're always saying, okay, this is four fingers. This, actually this right here is a measurement, believe it or not. Because if you do this, nine times out of 10, it's the same distance. Just this, an arm length. But also you're looking at it and you're looking at that canoe and you're seeing if it, if it looks balanced, if it looks right. And you're adjusting it based on that. And they come out symmetrical every single time. They have no choice because you're including all sorts of senses into determining if it's balanced or not. And so you're also using sound. You're hitting each, each rib to see this, to make sure that, because sometimes one part of the rib has a different density than the other part of the rib. And so that means this one might have to be a little bit thinner on this side to get the same sort of balance that it's needed. So you're hitting things, you're listening, you're looking, you're feeling, you're touching, you're, you're using all your senses to determine the balance of that canoe. And so it's a, and, and you're also um, get a sense of it. Like you just know, okay, this is the, lib, the ribs all locked in, in place. The sheathing is all nice. The nose stems are, in, are, are solid. You know, the, the sap that we got is really working really good. You know, you get a sense of your product. And so when you're building a canoe, you want the best products available that nature has to offer. So you're looking for bark that has stretch, that's buoyant, that's not gonna crack, where the eyes don't come open on it. Um, so, you, you know, you're looking for a certain texture and a certain quality of bark. Your spruce gum, same thing. You know, you don't want the real hard gum, you want the, like, the gooey white gum that you find because it works the best. The roots all get split in half and peeled. 
they all get pulled on first to make sure that they're strong. So everything gets tested before you, you construct the birch bark canoe. And they're fun to make. And once you make one, you'll always want to make them. Because it's like when you're done, you think, wow, I made that with a knife. You know, the knife. Because everything is done by hand. You know, the splitting of the cedar, the splitting of the ribs, that's all done by hand. You, sp you actually split the wood with your hand. And so all you do is you just use your knife to make the wedge, to put the wedge into the wood. You hammer that down with another stick and, it, and then it starts, you start splitting your wood. And so everything gets split, you know. Wok or walk means curve in Ojibwe. So walkman, walkman. It's, it's a, they call it a crooked knife. And you always carve with it towards yourself and it has a different handle. So it's an indigenous design for a knife. So it's not, not a knife where you carve like this, but you actually carve to, your, to yourself. And you have more control that way. You have more con control carving like this than you do like this. And so, yes, we make uh, birch bark canoes with only a knife. So I, I watched quite a few different canoe builds um, before I was able to build them on my own. And then finally one day, um, I thought, you know what, I, can, I think I, I might be able to, to do this. Because by then I was already carving ribs, I was making the sheathing, I was carving gunwales, I was doing nose stems, I was you know, selecting the bark, I was cutting and peeling the roots. And so, and I was watching them watch the canoe. And so you, this is a canoe builder. This is half, half the time when they're building a canoe, they're doing this. Sitting there like this, leg over their other leg. And they're just staring at that canoe. No canoe is done the same way. And what they always said was, build the canoe in your mind first. You know, so pic picture yourself getting the bark, pic picture yourself getting the roots and the sap. Picture yourself, you know, finding that ash tree or that birch tree for your gunwales, for your inwales, for your outwales. Find them in your mind. Do that work, split them, carve them. Take the time, carve that whole thing. Then start carving your ribs. You know, carve your stakes, start getting your plugs made. You know, so you, the, a, a canoe builder is always thinking like this and staring at the canoe, you know? And what they're doing is they're, they're building it in their mind. And so half the time they're thinking, looking at it, you know? And that's, and then I used to sit there and I found it more interesting watching them watch the canoe than, than them doing anything else because it's so intense. They're like, you know? And like for 20 minutes, you know? And then they'd say, okay, this is what we're gonna do. And so when I started building birch bark canoes, um, naturally that's how I was too, you know? So I was an apprentice, I guess, with uh, a couple of canoe builders. Um, and it was a, you know, a very enjoyable experience, a lot of physical hard work. Um, but, you know, you, you build them with a knife. So with birch bark, what you're looking for, I guess, is something that's a little bit thicker than like a DVD. You want something that, that's thicker than that. But what you're also looking for is you're, you're gonna make a little slice in the tree and you're gonna take a little, tear a little piece and you're gonna bend it. And what you're looking for is it gonna crack. If it cracks, it's no good. And also, if it's booky. So if there's all sorts of layers in that birch bark, it's no good for making a canoe because those different layers, water is going to get in between the different layers and it's not going to be any good. So it has to be one solid piece of birch bark. And so when you look at birch trees, you'll see some of them are, the bark is really bulky and you can separate the different layers and others are not. They're very pliable, they're very, um, they're almost like rubber. And that's the kind that you need for the birch bark canoe. And what you do is you look at a tree and if it has moss on the bottom of the tree, on the south side of the tree, right, 
that tells me that, number one, that part of the tree is getting most of the sun during the day, but the bottom isn't because of the growth around that area. Um, but it, for whatever reason, those conditions produce a very rubbery, good type of a bark. And so what you do is you look at the tree and you see if there's any bends in it because you want a fairly straight piece. And if there is a bend, you want to cut into the bend so that the bottom part of the bark is straight and that the bending, the, the crooked parts are going to be the, the top parts of the canoe, which could easily be straightened out. And what you do is you get a, a piece of rotten wood. So you find a long piece of just an old rotten wood that still has some strength to it. And what you do is you wiggle your knife through it. And so the blade is sticking out. And so now you have this long stick with a little, with a little blade sticking out at the end. And then you look, go up to that tree after you make your, your, your offerings. And then you just took and you start scraping your line down. On the longest day of the year, that is when the bark comes off the best. The longest day of the year, because that's when the tree gets the most sun. The longest day of the year, the bark will always come off better than any other day. So that's when you go for it. Tuk, you start scraping down. But a birch tree has two different layers of bark. There's the inner bark and the outer bark. We're only after the outer bark. So when you're cutting, right away on the longest day of the year, you can hear it cracking, like it popping, like the bark is separating from the, the inner bark. And so you can hear that, and that's the sound that you want because that means you're not digging into the, the uh, inner bark. If you, if you cut through that inner bark, that tree will die. So you have to be careful that you're only cutting the outer bark and, and you're using your knife and you're flipping that outer bark out like this as you go down. Once you make it all the way to the bottom of the tree, you grab that stick, you put it in that fold that you created and you like literally walk around the tree and the whole thing comes off. And you can get great big sheets without having to climb it or anything or cut the tree down and the tree will survive. And then what you do is you roll that bark up you take off all the, the stuff you don't want on there, like you'll, you'll find like little pieces of birch bark that are just hanging off. You clear all that off, roll it up, grab some uh, bark off a willow, tie it. On the back it goes and away you go. You go back to your village and you start, you know, congratulating yourself for finding an amazing piece of birch bark. When you're getting birch bark for a canoe, you want something like this. Because you want the bottoms to be able to, you want the birch bark to be able to come up to the canoe and at least halfway up the sides. And so you're looking for something that has that sort of width to it. And you have to remember that one side of the tree is gonna be thicker than the other side of the tree. And so that's what you're looking for, is you're looking for something like that, you know. So when you get further north and the trees are smaller, um, they were sewing together, you know, 14 or 15 birch bark trees together just to make one canoe. You have to make sure that you have your stakes made. And the stakes are what's holding the bark up um, so that it's suspended up so that they can go around the gunwales. And so basically when you think about a canoe, you have your birch bark, it's laid down. You're building this frame that looks like a big set of snowshoes. The birch bark gets bent over that. The, the gunwales flo are floated above them using these stakes. The, the birch bark gets fastened onto that with roots. The nose stems get put in, then your sheathing, and then your ribs go in. So your cross pieces, so your cross rails, are always made out of a harder wood. So that's birch, maple, oak, ash, you know, white ash, black ash, hickory, um, you know, that type of wood. We soak everything for at least one day before we bend. And then what we do is we boil water and we, we pour the water on there. And uh, we just put the, like, the rib inside the boiling pot. We get a dipper, we pour it on there. And I start bending at the right 
at the right areas so that it fits perfectly in the canoe. And there's a locking system, so when you're building your in whales, there's a slot in there like this so that the ribs can actually fit in there. And then the side, the side rail prevents the rib from going out. And so the way that it's designed, it's all interlocked with each other and every piece supports every other piece.